By the time we're finished studying race, I hope you'll be able to see that this is absolutely central to the history of poverty. It affects the poverty of African Americans, but also the poverty of all Americans in a different way. Uh, let's take a look at the historical evolution of this process. Now let's go all the way back to the first uh, permanent settlement in British North America, in uh, Virginia, in 1607. Uh, at first, the colony floundered badly uh, until they discovered tobacco uh, as the economic engine of the colony. The, and, and it offered fabulous wealth to uh, large landowners, but it created an enormous demand for labor. Now, almost all labor in early Virginia was unfree labor. Now, that took three different forms. Uh, the first attempts were to uh, force the labor of Native Americans. That went badly. They could escape. Uh, they knew the countryside. Uh, they were simply not willing to cooperate. Uh, then they brought over indentured servants. Uh, these were uh, people on the bottom of English society or Irish society. Uh, they were uh, carried across the Atlantic in return for uh, several years of service. Uh, they were treated terribly. Uh, their lot was not much better than that of slaves. Um, and for most of the 17th century, there were relatively few Africans in Virginia. By far the largest labor source was uh, indentured servants. Now, in uh, the middle of the 17th century, land prices were continuing to rise. Um, and uh, at the same time, th there was only poorer land left. So some of these indentured servants, those who survived, many of them died, but those who survived uh, had had high hopes of becoming planters themselves, of getting land, but they found that uh, they couldn't afford it, that their freedom dues, the uh, uh, amount that they were given after they finished their term of, of service, several years, sometimes four, five, seven, eight years or more, uh, they uh, were not uh, getting enough to really uh, accumulate any decent parcel of land. Um, and they found that the land that they could get uh, was bordering on Native American lands. And that led to attacks against these English settlers uh, by Native Americans who were very concerned about uh, their land being encroached upon. Now, the result is that these former indentured servants uh, were angry. They were angry at two different groups, at Native Americans who had uh, sometimes attacked them, but also at the planters, in other words, the rich landowners who had mis mistreated them horribly when they were servants and then left them with poor land uh, far from the capital, Jamestown. Uh, what they had uh, worked uh, and, and, you know, uh, bled for for so long was now being uh, denied them. Now, the result of all this was a major rebellion against the planter class in Virginia called Bacon's Rebellion, led by Nathaniel Bacon in 1676. Uh, more and more servants were living to be free because living conditions by mid-century had improved in Virginia. Uh, now, these rebels, uh, led by Bacon, were mostly ex-indentured servants. Uh, they had weapons. They had needed them for hunting and for protection against uh, attacks by Native Americans. Uh, and they uh, attacked in those two directions, the two groups they were angry toward. Uh, they attacked Native Americans. They also attacked the capital, Jamestown, the center of uh, economic and political power in Virginia, and they burned it to the ground. Uh, and here is the key that especially terrified the planter class, the elites. Uh, these former indentured servants had some uh, 
alliances with the relatively small number of Africans who were in Virginia. Uh, the planters were terrified of that. Why? Uh, if the poor of both races were to, were to unite, uh, they would form a large majority in relation to the planters. It would be uh, a society divided by class, rich versus poor. This did not uh, look like a very good uh, way to organize society in the eyes of the planters. Now, what do they want in order to repeat, to avoid a repeat of Bacon's rebellion? Well, they, they needed workers. They needed a, a, a labor force. Uh, that was the source of their wealth. Uh, tobacco was very labor intensive. They needed workers to uh, continue to make them rich by producing tobacco. Uh, but they wanted a labor force that did not have weapons, that would never own land that would never be free, that would not learn to read so they couldn't communicate, a labor force whose descendants would also work for the planter's descendants, on and on and on, and uh, ideally a workforce that could easily be identified by the color of their skin. You can see where we're going with this. Uh, the perfect solution was African slaves. Now, if this theory has any validity, then we should see it reflected in statistics. And these statistics are taken from uh, a two volume series uh, published uh, some years ago by the Census Bureau uh, of Historical American Statistics. In 1670, a few years before Bacon's Rebellion, the entire population of Virginia was only around 35,000 and about 5.7% uh, were black. Uh, and then we have Bacon's Rebellion. And then let's move forward to 1700, a quarter century after that. Uh, the population had gone up significantly, but the uh, black population had got up more than eightfold, so that now it represented 28%, not just 5 or 6% of the population. Now, by 1750, the number of African Americans, almost all of whom were slaves, had grown to more than 100,000, and that was around 44% of all the population of Virginia. And by of the time of the American Revolution in 1780, uh, there were 220,000 slaves in Virginia, uh, more than 100 times the number that there had been before Bacon's Rebellion. Uh, so you can see that the numbers here uh, show a dramatic increase in the reliance on African slaves. Now, Bacon's Rebellion was not the only reason. There were other factors. Uh, for example, the uh, breakup of the Royal African Company, which made uh, uh, slaves cheaper, uh, improved economic conditions in Britain, which made indentured servants more expensive to uh, convince to come over, things like that. So I don't want to suggest that Bacon's Rebellion was the only factor, but it was a very important factor. Now, there was one more problem that remained to be solved. The planters were still a minority. Now, how could they change that? How could they gain firmer control of Virginia society? Well, they could change the basis of society from class to race. So now they could become a majority if it was not rich versus poor, if instead it was white versus black. So now they're in the majority. And this is when the very concept of whiteness 
was invented. You might think, well, whiteness goes back to ancient times. Well, not the concept of whiteness. There were uh, English, Irish, French, German, etc. Uh, people were well aware of ethnicities like this, but uh, they were not really focused on the concept of a white person. So in the 17th century, we have the invention of whiteness, and this served the interests of the elites extremely well. Now, how did they manage to do that, to change from class to race? Well, they made poor whites feel superior uh, so that they could uh, identify as whites and not as poor people. Uh, and blacks were treated as fundamentally different from whites. For example, slaves were branded on the arm or forehead. Uh, sex was banned between blacks and whites. They, they were extremely aware of the possibility of uh, unions, of alliances, of uh, uh, along lines of class rather than race. Uh, poor whites were chosen to be on slave patrols and paid a little bit for that. Uh, they were given uh, the chance to feel superior this way. Uh, clergymen were prohibited from baptizing slaves. Initially, uh, Christians could not be enslaved, but, they, but Virginia specifically changed this law in 1667, which was slightly before Bacon's Rebellion. This process of change was already going on before Bacon's Rebellion. By the 1680s, uh, after Bacon's Rebellion, all blacks were considered slaves unless they could prove that they were free. Now, uh, Tim Wise, who uh, calls himself an anti-racism educator and who's uh, a very interesting author, uh, has had this to say about American racial history. He said, this is symbolic of the entire history of race and class politics in America. Rich white people telling working class and poor white people that their problems are black and brown people. You might add uh, throughout our history, sometimes the problems were red people. Uh, as in the, the bias against Native Americans. Sometimes they were quote-unquote yellow people, as in the uh, Chinese exclusion acts uh, or the Japanese internment camps in World War II. Um, sometimes they were immigrants, uh, as in uh, the uh, presidential campaign of, of 2016, in which Donald Trump uh, launched his campaign uh, by calling Mexicans rapists and killers. This is a pattern that has spanned the entire length of American history. Uh, and I would encourage you to follow this link, uh, which will be available on the, uh, the PDF version of this, not on the YouTube version, uh, to, uh, to listen to Tim Wise explain it in his own words.